young men and uh, Philly checks in trouble and it's Jeffers who tucks it away. Yo, yeah, guys, and welcome to the Frangerine Dream with me, Frango Unchained. How on earth is it going? I have got a feeling about this year, 2122, has got me all pumped up. I love this save again. I went off it for the past couple of seasons because we were just sort of sleepwalking towards mid table finishers. We had no money to spend, it was doing me head in. Um, and now, because because we just had that little bit of financial security, everything has fallen into place. You can see already we are second in the league. Fair enough, we've only played uh, five matches, but let's just let's just take a gander at uh, how we've done since that first game of the season against Derby. And um, if you remember, we put up a good account of ourselves against Derby at Bloomfield Road. We drew one-one. We then uh, hosted Wrexham in the cup and drew nil-nil and won on penalties. But we had all the kids out and uh, gave debuts to people like Andy Downey in there, Glenn Key, Grant Campbell, Dylan Flynn, Cartwright, Rock, even Austin West, who I'll come to in a second. Uh, but yeah, that was just the means to an end. It got us through to the next round. We then beat Birmingham 1-0 away, uh, which was a very satisfying result. Brad Potts with the goal there. And we drew against Barnsley thanks to a Kieran Dow goal. We beat Gillingham 2-0 at home. And fair enough, Gillingham are probably one of the favourites to get relegated this season. But what was satisfying about this match is that I started Danny Phyllis-Kirk for the first time uh, this season. Or maybe the second. Might be the second, actually. And he scored his first two goals of the season, which just oh, delighted me. If you've been watching in a while, you'll know that Danny Phyllis-Kirk has not been in great form since we came up to the Championship. And he was, I was getting to the end of my tether with him, but, but he's turned it round and it looks like he might be on the up again. Don't want to jinx it, but he might well be. Uh, we then got knocked out of the AFL Cup thanks to Premier League side Wolves. We hosted them at Bloomfield Road and they beat us 3-2 in extra time, which was it was it was sad. And we also lost George Hurst to injury. That was the more annoying thing. Um, but yeah, it was it was fine. We were out of the cup, but we went out we went out kicking and screaming to a Premier League club. So I will take that. And we've still we are still unbeaten in the league as we then went to Hull and picked up a one nil win with Ben Close's first goal for the club. So it's just been it's just been really satisfying. I've enjoyed I've enjoyed this season so far, and. I've got the feeling it can only get better because we've made some signings. The summer transfer window is over and let me show you a few of these guys. So I'll start with the least exciting and work my way up. I've signed a young regen called Carlos Lopez. Decent little right back. Just very rounded stats. Uh, nothing special at the minute and he is 21 so, so he's not really as good as I'd like a 21 year old footballer to be but he's he's looking all right. We signed him off Villarreal for £50,000 and he's gone straight on loan to Queen of the South in the Scottish second tier. Neil Etheridge, we've brought in former Fulham goalkeeper. Uh, we brought him in just so we can have a backup goalkeeper. Obviously Lee Camp left this summer because he's retired. So I don't imagine he'll play much, but I think he's, he's fine with that. He realises that. So yeah, just here as a bit of cover. The third of four signings is just a, just a player of incredible quality for the level that we we are currently at. It's Moroccan international Eunice Belanda. Primarily he will be sort of vying with Kieran Dowell for that for that attacking midfielder spot. Uh, but he can play on either wing in case we need him to. I I was I did want to bring in another player who was versatile in that way. Um because we've not really got that much cover on the wings if we want to go to like two banks of four or a four four one one. Something like that. So he gives us that flexibility, does Eunice Belanda. And just look at these attributes. Like, technically, he is fucking excellent. Excellent player. Great passing, great technique, great first touch. Uh, and decent at, you know, finishing, dribbling, free kicks even, long shots he's good at. Oh, excellent. Very, very skillful, very flair player. Physically and mentally, he leaves a little bit to be desired. He could do with a bit of extra pace, uh, maybe a bit of work rate, determination. But... He's only on a one-year deal. If it doesn't work out for him, we will ship him on. But I, I like that we've got this guy as, um, I'd say, a squad player. We've got Eunice Belanda as a squad player. And I'm very happy with that. He's not made an appearance for us yet because we've had 
the international break between signing him and playing this this next match. Be yeah, excited to bring in Eunice Belanda, and we have made one more signing. Cue the music. We've made one more fucking summer signing. And I'll tell you what happened. Gary Taylor Fletcher, you remember GTF? Maybe you don't. Gary Taylor Fletcher is a player that I brought in, brought back into the club when I was getting the band back together. He was a bit part player for one year and then he retired and he became my under 18s manager. Not sure if I mentioned that, but he has been. But recently he was sniped. He's now manager of Kilmarnock, and I wish him well, I really do. Um, but that meant that we had room in our coaching staff, and we could do with a bit of extra depth, sure. And we could do with, with some leadership, with some proven quality, with someone who knows the game, who knows football at the back of his fucking hand, who can make things happen, who can get the best out of his teammates. You probably know by now who it is, if you've been watching this series quite a while. And you'll probably know that he is my favourite signing that I have made now in Football Manager 2017. Because ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to Blackpool FC, Charlie fucking Adam. <laughs> it took us five years to bring Charlie Adam back to Blackpool. Um, he's now 35, I've paid way over the odds for him. A 35-year-old with no pace at all. Oh, he's also under-18's manager, in case that wasn't clear. And I've nicknamed him Chadham, because of course. Um, but yeah, I've paid £235,000 for him for this 35-year-old who is going to struggle to move around the pitch. But, obviously, this is partly using the Luke Freeman money, the Freddie Woodman money, the Austin West money, which I've, I've still not showed you that Austin West has moved, but he has. That freed up some funds. And this is the first time where I've had the means, I've had the the finances, I've had the resources to bring in Chatham. So that's what I've bloody done. And this has been my goal for the last five years. And we are there. And I feel like now we can make that next step. We can we can step up to the Premier League. That's how quickly it's turned around for me. End of last season, I thought this squad was just doomed for either mediocrity or relegation. And now I reckon we can win this bloody league. I reckon we're better than Everton, we're better than Hull. We've proved we're better than Hull. I'm going to prove in a minute, hopefully, that we're better than Everton. And yeah, here is confirmation that Austin West, our young uh, Nigerian centre-back that we signed last year for free, we moved him on to Fulham for 1.2 million. So not a bad bit of business at all. He'll probably be pretty good, but his, his attributes are a bit erratic for me. They're a bit all over the place. He's got low concentration. He's got low technicals. Uh, not very quick. It, yeah, he's just... He's not the player for me. And if we can get 1.2 million, which we did, then bye-bye Austin West. And that has allowed these four new players to come in. Um, so yeah, very happy. Very happy with this summer. We've brought in an awful lot of quality. So let's jump into the next match. Today, I'm going to be showing you two matches uh, at home against Everton at Bloomfield Road and away at Aston Villa. Aston Villa, so two, obviously not now because we're in the championship, but two big clubs, two clubs who spent decades in the top flight of English football. So here are the lineups. We've seen Everton's lineup fairly recently, so I won't go into it in too much detail. They've got M. Scott, who's a young regent up front, and he looks bloody good. Is he from their academy? Yes, he is. Oh, good job. Local lad, Mike Scott. I'm rooting for you, mate, but just not today, if you don't mind. They've got William Anderson, who is another decent-looking regen on the right wing. I say decent, he looks bloody brilliant, doesn't he? Very quick, very very skillful, good technical attributes. They've got Tom Ro Rogic. I'm never quite sure I'd say his name. Tom Rogic? Rogic? They've got him, anyway, from Celtic. Uh, Victor Fisher on the left, and I'm pretty sure all those defenders were there last time, and there's Funk on the bench. Remember Funk, Sebastian Funk. Right, now, our lineup is quite unsurprising, but we have got a lot of quality on the bench. Uh, so John Ruddy is in the goal. John, I love having John Ruddy. He has, he's the reason why we've done so well in the first few games of the season, because... 
last season and the season before, we would play out very even games, but we would lose because we just, our quality was lacking that little bit. But now with John Ruddy, he just pulls off that one extra save. Do you know what I mean? And that can be the difference sometimes. And I feel like he has been the difference on occasions this season. We've got Freeman at right back. Lee Hodson is actually uh, just, literally just back. I think it was yesterday from his broken leg. He's back in full training. So we'll look forward to seeing him back in the team at some point. Kigbu Wilson and Husband are also in the back four. We've got Mark Kane, Jay Fulton and Brad Potts in midfield with Kieran Dowell behind Danny Phyllis-Kirk and Aidan O'Brien because George Hurst is just coming back from injury himself. Well, he's actually, he's actually playing through an injury. I've, I've made him. Um, only so we've got him as backup if we need him. But on the bench as well, we've got Owen the Impact Jones, Eunice Belander, Chadham, Ben Close, Tom Alden and Lee Hodson. Oh, never in this save have I had such quality on my bench. Any of these could be in the starting lineup, probably apart from Owen the Impact Jones, because he's just the impact. But any of them have the quality to be in the starting lineup. Charlie Adam has made one sub appearance so far, so I don't want to throw him into the first team just yet. And Eunice Belhanda has not made any appearances, as I said. So let's get into this match. I can't wait to. Ah, oh, I can't wait to use this squad this season now. But listen, I feel like I've talked a big game so far. This is still Everton. We're still playing against Everton. We lost to them at the end of last season. It's not the end of the world if we lose again today. But I'm hoping that we can put down a marker. We've already beaten some pretty decent teams in this uh, in this season so far. So I'm hoping we can keep that momentum going. The corner for Everton. It's crossed in. Oh, and John Ruddy. <laughs> John Ruddy makes his first mistake of the season. Just a couple of minutes after I was bigging him up, he came to collect the uh, the throw in. Oh, and it was just it was just awful. That's a that's an awful goal to concede. I'm not blaming Ruddy specifically. The defenders should also have got to it. Someone should have got to that. And just like that, we're 1-0 down and John Ruddy has instantly made me regret talking him up before the match. Oh, and Brad Potts has got it on the edge of the area. His shot's blocked. Danny Phillips goes to Mark O'Kane. Oh, Foster, a good save from Berisha. Kieran Dowell's corner. It's crossed in away as far as Mark O'Kane to Brad Potts. Has a go. It's wide. Come on, Bradley. So 1-0 at half time, but the only chance Everton have had was that just shitty scramble in the box. So I'm I'm okay. I'm okay with that. Um I'll say they've not been good enough just to get those get those green bars across here. Get them all looking motivated. And in fact we've got a Kieran Dowell here who's on a six point six, he's looking frustrated, and he's not been motivated by my words. So I'm gonna mm, oh look at this for a choice now. Do I bring on Chadham or do I bring on Belanda? I feel like Belhanda will come on later if we're still looking for that little something. For now, Chadham is what I need. I'm going to bring you on, mate, unsurprisingly, as Nengonch. Your job is to sit the fuck down. Not literally, but just stay where you are. Just stay in that one position and distribute accordingly. It's a long throw for Everton. It's headed away as far as Billing. Billing to Anderson. Anderson drills it wide. Yes. Blackpool, you'd have to say, are the dominant team so far, but we've only had one highlight to show for it. Um, Michael Kane, Nadie O'Brien, both looking pretty suspect. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I was prepared for this eventuality, so we are swapping things around. And it is a triumphant return in this series for uh, the 4 2 3 1 narrow. Now. We're blessed with a couple of good attacking midfielders now, so that's why I am bringing on Eunice Belander for Jay Fulton. Um, and you might say, Franny, Jay Fulton has been the best out of those two, uh, out of those three, sorry, central midfielders that you had on before. Why take him off? Because uh, he doesn't really fit this style of play. We need someone that's all action, and he's more of a sitting midfielder. So he comes off. We keep the underperforming Kane and Potts duo intact. And fuck it, we're losing. So let's have attacking wing backs in Husband and Freeman. And 20 minutes to go. Will we get a second highlight in this match? Seven minutes to go, and we have got highlight. Belanda to Markle Kane. Yes! It lagged, but it was never going anywhere apart from in that fucking goal. 
simple little move. It was Bell Handu who got the ball from the throw and laid it off to Michael Kane, who was completely unmarked. Fair play to him. And it's a good finish into the far corner. Game on then. 1-1. One, one, and we've got another throw in. Oh, it's cut out though. And Nakat to Pereira to Fisher. Tackle by Freeman. Oh, he's giving it away to Williams and Everton with a long ball over the top looking for Pereira. Pereira's through and he's put it wide. And with with a just over a minute of the game to go, I'm going to bring on Owen the Impact Jones for A.D. O'Brien. So Owen the Impact Jones, can he make an can he make an impact today? Probably not. I've not given him much of a chance to be fair, but uh, we only scored a couple of minutes ago. We have got a corner with the end of the game looming. Belanda to Potts. Oh! <laughs> Was that Belanda's assist again? It was Owen the Impact Jones who took it down. Belanda wrapped her foot around it and gave it to Brad Potts. Ladies and gentlemen, the city belongs to Eunice Belanda tonight. Is Blackpool a city? It's not, is it? It's a town. It's definitely a town. Oh, a great win. A great win for Blackpool. And I tell you what, there's going to be some competition for that centre attacking midfield space. Kieran Dowell has been one of my best signings on this save, but, you know, with Eunice Belander getting two assists on his debut, he's got to watch his back, Kieran Dowell. He's definitely got to watch his back. Chadham not yet living up to the hype, but uh, the performances will come, mate, don't worry. And Blackpool go to top of the league, however temporary it may be. Let's just take two seconds to enjoy this. Oh... Now, it's second game time. We're playing away at Aston Villa, and they're lining up with a 3-2-3-2, which is interesting, and it's making me sort of rethink this tactic. So far, everything is exactly the same as it was in the Everton match, but it may change fairly quickly, because I'm not sure how effective we're going to be like this. In fact, what I am going to do, because that back line is going to be pretty difficult to break down. I'm going to keep Dowell as an attacking mid. I'm going to drop Phyllis Coke back to a false nine. And I'm going to tell Brad Potts to get further forward. And Michael Kane as well. So we're really going to try and flood players in as Danny Phyllis Kirk is dragging players out of position. Here we go then. Can we keep our unbeaten run going for another match? Oh, it feels great to say that as Blackpool manager. I'm so glad that it's going well again. I feel like this series went off the boil a bit, but we're back. We're back in style. And Kieran Dowell is running into a bit of space. He's got the defence terrified there. They're backing away from him, but he's put the shot wide. Fulton to Kieran Dowell to Michael Kane to O'Brien. Not it down for Potts. Good play. Dowell to Phyllis Kirk to Fulton. Still sitting as that holding man. Now we've got O'Brien. This is great play. James Husband to Brad Potts. To O'Brien, to Phyllis Kirk. Oh, it's cut out. Can Aston Villa counter-attack? It certainly looks like they're going to. Matthews is running forward as an inverted wing-back, is he? Clancy to Fernandez to... I'm not even going to try with that name. What's your name? Okachukwu. Okachukwu, of course it is. God, they get rid of Gabby Abbong Lahore. And they bring in... <laughs> they bring in Ibrahim Okachukwu. Unlucky boys, things just haven't gone right for us so far. Who's unhappy? Is that... Br oh no, it's Michael Kane. Michael Kane. Look to switch off. Come on, Michael. Um, Unlucky so far. I've said this same thing again, and now he's happy. What is going on with your head, Michael? Okay, so we stay as we are for the time being, but Danny Phyllis Kirk is just a few minutes away from being taken off and replaced by... Who else? But Eunice Belander, and also Chadham is coming on. So we've got a double substitution. Eunice Belander and Chadham are coming on for Jay Fulton again. I feel a bit bad that he's the casualty once more. And Danny Phyllis Kirk. Come on, boys. Give me, give me a bit more vindication for these signings. Chadham, still need to see something from you, please. In fact, no, I don't. You're fucking Charlie Adam. I can't believe he's here. I'm so excited. Three minutes to go and John Ruddy boots the ball downfield and Kieran Freeman has it. Oh, Freeman's giving it away to Fernandez. Now he's Carlos Gill. Okay. Gill to Zerolem. Oh, good signing. Westwood. Westwood to Okichukwu. Oh, 
John Ruddy palms the ball behind and with two minutes to go, I feel a bit bad for Owen the Impact Jones, but he's coming on for another measly amount of time. I'm going to say I have faith in him. Get out there, my friend. Carlos Gill to Chester, to Zerelem, to Roberts. Oh, we've got the ball. Chatham to O'Brien. Kane through to Kieran Dowell. Oh, his first touch was too heavy and the defender nicked it off him. And with two minutes of injury time to be played, Aston Villa are just outside our box. Are they going to get a uh, a bit of a comeback for Everton? A comeback? Oh, Michael Kane wins the ball to Kieran Dowell. Now it's Owen, Owen the Impact Jones. To Freeman. Oh, it's, it's cleared. Brad Potts to Belanda to Chatham to Dowell. Through for Owen the Impact Jones. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like everything's coming up Millhouse boys Kieran Dowell's little pass through and Owen the Impact Jones stabbed the ball beyond the keeper let's just make a couple of changes before we get too excited and throw this lead away so just clearing all instructions and going to a 4-5-1 on standard flexible and is that enough Okachukwu has a shot it's blocked Roberts crosses it in. Pierce heads it on. It's way as far as Fernandez. Oh, the shot's blocked and it's over. <laughs> Not the most comfortable three points we'll get this season. I mean, neither of these matches have been. But these are the margins. When you get that extra bit of quality, this is what I've been moaning about for two seasons. Just the, the little bit of quality we need just wasn't there. And so we were, so we were having draws and wins just snatched away from us when when it felt unjust and we couldn't do anything about it. And now the tables are starting to turn. I don't want to get too ahead of myself, but we are now the team. We're the informed team at the minute. We're the team to beat. We are the team that is snatching points off other teams. We've snatched four points in this episode alone. <laughs> and we had a shit ton of shots while we were doing it. Maybe that's something I need to look at. But yeah, once again, for the second time in just a few days, Blackpool go top of the Skybet Championship. And this is where shit gets real. Blackpool are putting their stamp on this league. Can we go up? I, I don't know. I literally don't know. Maybe we can. Maybe we'll fall away very soon. In either case, please like and subscribe if you have enjoyed this video. But apart from that, guys, I will see you next time. Bye.